Hey guys, so I have gotten a number of questions and some concern about the ethnography project. So I'm just going to give you guys um, another like quick little walkthrough, which hopefully assuages some of your guys' fears about this project. So the ethnography as a whole is just an exploration of a culture that you are unfamiliar with or not a part of. So in my example, my family, I'm from Kansas, we are ethnically, you know, Volga German from the Midwest. So I would not pick any of those cultures to look into and explore because that is what I am. Um, that's, you know, the way I grew up. So for my ethnography, I would want to look into a different culture that is new to me. So currently my roommate is Hawaiian. So I might be like, okay, well, I have easy access to someone who is Hawaiian. So maybe I want to look into that culture. My boyfriend is from the Czech Republic. So I might be like, I have easy access to someone from the Czech Republic. Maybe I want to look into that culture. So a culture that you do not belong to and are more unfamiliar with is a culture that you want to choose, particularly if you know you have access to people within that culture. So if you go under this week four ethnography preview, doo -doo -doo, there is another little video down here. I'm not quite sure what all I said in it because it's been a while since I recorded that one, I think. Um, but like I said, to give you experience with a culture that you are unfamiliar with. I have people who do you know, straightforward things like Hawaii or Mexico or Germany or Japan or you know, Liechtenstein or Somalia, whatever is interesting to you. But I also have people who are like, I want to look into deaf culture because deaf culture is a culture or like skater culture. It's a subculture. It counts as a culture. So as long as you can defend why this thing is a culture, then it can totally count. Like people who love, you know, mountain biking or hiking, if there's a specific subgroup in there that you consider a culture as long as you can define how it meets the definition of culture. So a shared language, shared experiences, shared set of values, then feel free to do it, but it cannot be a culture that you belong to yourself. So you have to be able to gain access to them, which means you have to find people to talk to. So if you are on campus or if you are local, you can come to the International Club or the Intertribal Association, and there are people there from countries around the world and from different native tribes. Make friends, talk to people that way. You can also post on the internet. You can post on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and say, I'm looking for people within this particular culture to talk to and interact with for a school project. And people are typically willing to talk to other people. So da -da -da. you have to do some research. We've already been doing some research within this class, which you will be able to use for your ethnography. So basically, you know, from for the first couple weeks, we've just been kind of figuring out what culture you may want to do. But through some of the readings, you know, all that jazz, it should be guiding you in what you may want to talk about. So this week six, which we're on, mythology and story discussion and names and narratives, you can use both of these things in your ethnography. So if you wanna have a section about the origin of how your culture you know, thinks the world was formed, use this discussion board to help guide your thoughts and to help you pull some resources um, so that you can start outlining that section this names and narratives. You can talk about names and cultural stories in your ethnography and use this assignment and this, this is not a discussion board, this is just an assignment to guide your thoughts. And if you go over here to the announcements, there is this ethnography outline here. If you copy and paste that, this is what opens. You can, I have, I own it. So, um, you know, you will not have all these options, but you can file, you can make a copy and put this into your Google Drive, 
you know, take away this stuff, put your name on it, put your ethnography title, and then this will guide you in how you're going to go about writing your paper with your headings, your subheadings, all that jazz, and give you some ideas of things to talk about. So maybe you want to look at um, the Cherokee tribe down in Kansas and Oklahoma. So the culture I am studying is the Cherokee culture. This is a unique culture because of X, Y, Z. So how do they fall into that description of what a culture is? Well, they have a shared experience. They have a shared language. They have a you know, shared origin story, what have you. You know, a brief overview of the culture or some important historical events or you know, where they are geographically, whatever is interesting or important to you. What is the purpose of your paper? Are you just investigating and studying, or would you like to compare and contrast this culture against your own culture? That will be up to you. Your methodology. So how did you find your information? Well, I did some online research. I picked up this book from the library, and I interviewed these three different people. To find my people, I went on my Facebook and I typed out, hey, does anyone know anyone belonging to this? particular cultural group because I have a project and I would like to interview them. You know, it could be as simple as that. What are some of your findings? So what interests you about this culture and what do you want to talk about? You only need five. I have a list of 20 here to give everybody some ideas. You do not have to talk about all 20. Please don't, your paper's gonna be way too long. Um, but just pick five of these things, five, six, whatever, whatever makes you happy. I mean, just five is for an A, three is for a C. So I guess if you're just aiming to pass, then you can only do three if you'd like. Um, but aim for five, please. And say, okay, I wanna talk about food in this particular culture. If you do a subculture like skater culture or death culture, you, you might not, Talk about food because if it's if it's a subculture within America, they probably just eat you know American food like the rest of us do, which means we eat a variety of types of things. But if it's something like deaf culture, there's a lot to say about the language because they have their own language. In America, they have ASL. How does the culture view music or what types of music are in that culture? You could talk about traditional music versus more modern pop music. Are there any particular things in etiquette that you want to explore? So what, do you, like, how do you eat? Do you eat with your fingers? Do you eat with a fork and a knife and a spoon? Do you eat with chopsticks? Is there a specific way that you have to set the table? Is it rude to eat with your left hand? You know, what are some rules? Are there any traditions that you want to talk about within this culture? No. So this could be like traditions with dancing. Um, this could be traditions with like weddings or celebrations, um, like coming of age traditions or ceremonies. You could talk about different holidays. How many holidays are there? What kind of holidays do they celebrate? Are they religious holidays or are they more like secular holidays for history? How does this culture view education? Do boys and girls in school get the same level of education? Are they both expected to go to school? How do they treat their teachers? Are there any particular family or gender roles that you would like to talk about? Is there a major religion within this particular culture? How do they view physical contact or personal space? When people greet each other, do they shake hands? Do they bow? Do they hug? Do they kiss each other on the cheek? When they're walking down the street, do are people typically touching when they walk down the street? Or is there like a nice little foot and a half of space between people? Are there certain actions that may be more respectful or more disrespectful? Mm -hmm. Hey, sorry guys, I have to sneeze. Um, how do they use time? Are they more monochronic where time is money? It's very linear. First we do this, this, then this. Or is it more polychronic where multiple things may be going at the same time? Time is more flowy. There's less expectation to be what Americans would consider you know, on time. Are there any common misconceptions or stereotype about people within this particular group? Uh, 
how do they view medicine? Do they typically use more Western medicine, more holistic medicine, faith healing? Like what is part of this culture? What is normal? Do they use more direct or indirect communication? Are they more collectivist or individualistic in this particular group or society or culture that you're looking at? How do they feel about emotional displays? Are there any particular rules that you have to follow when expressing emotion? Are you meant to be more like stoic and put together? Or is it expected that you, you know, wear your heart on your sleeve? What are their particular values, beliefs, or morals within this group? Are there any social norms within this group that you'd like to talk about? You know, you could, you know, what's tourism like in this culture? Um, how do they do business or feel about doing business with people from other cultures? You know, the, the list goes on and on. How do they feel about physical exercise? Is physical activity a huge part of, you know, this culture. I'm going to add that one. That one's a good one. Because um, in America, we don't even have PE in schools anymore. So, you no, know, we, we're not a very active country. But in other places, that's a huge part of their cultural thing. They go and collect mushrooms and go hiking and do, you know, whatever. So just think about some of those things. And if you want, you can compare and contrast. And then your results section. So did you accomplish your purpose of investigating? If you've gotten this far in the paper, yeah, you've probably learned some things. Um, and then why were your findings interesting or important? Why should you care about this? So you personally, why was it interesting to you? And like I said, these are just kind of an example. You don't have to follow you know, these exact 2021 20, things. You can choose which ones are interesting to you. If you want to have a section about mythology instead of, you know, religion, have at it. If you want to have a section about naming conventions within the culture, like why is every other person named Muhammad? Well, this is the reason why, based on their culture and their history. But you can definitely use those types of things in the paper. You can use these little assignments that we are doing. Next week, we will have a language presentation that you guys will record and put in. And for most people, I expect you to have a lot of that information within your paper. So it's, you know, knocking two birds with one stone. So if you are talking about Germany, you are probably going to be presenting over the German language. And as long as you keep track of your sources, then all you have to do is translate the presentation into a paragraph or two and use it in your paper. When we do the nonverbals, oh, we don't have an assignment with that one. Hmm. Oh, that's because we always have like an in-class discussion with you guys. We, we're not in class. Um, but hopefully in the readings for week eight, there will be, you know, information that you can use and be like, oh, here are some appropriate nonverbals in my culture. This is something you should not do. So like in the US, a very well-known nonverbal cue is flipping someone off. Um, but that doesn't translate to every single culture. So you could talk about, you know, hey, this is seen as a very um, offensive nonverbal. So if you ever travel here, you should avoid that. Or this is what's expected of people to do nonverbally. So if you go, you know, be a part of this culture, then this is how you should behave. Talk about how silence is viewed. America is a very speaking focused culture, while other cultures focus more on silence and listening. You could talk about that. Um, but just, I don't want this paper to be overtly stressful. Yes, it's a pretty big project, but we are doing things over the course of the weeks that you are hopefully focusing towards this ethnography that you can just slightly edit and then just throw straight into your paper when it's done. So that's the intention is these small assignments. You can edit them, make sure you have your sources cited, in-text citations, references page, and then just put them into this wherever it goes and then reorganize, turn in a draft if you so wish, and then just turn in the final product um, during week 14. 
if you guys have any, oh, hold on. I do need to, I do want to show you guys this in case I haven't already. There is a pin discussion called question ideas. You are welcome to go post in here with some question ideas. There is, there is an updated version somewhere that I have put in. Let me find it real quick so I can show it to where, show you guys where it is. Is this it? Yes. Here's an updated list of interview questions that hopefully get some of your guys' thoughts flowing on who you might want to interview and then what kind of questions could you ask them once you have talked to them. So if you are doing Mexico, you know, what does a traditional wedding look like in this culture? How does this culture celebrate birthdays? Are there any significant birthdays? Oh yeah, there's the quinceanera for a girl's 15th birthday, which is also, you know, a coming of age tradition. What's the most important tradition that you think is in your culture? Do you think your tradition or your culture is dying out? And then are people doing anything to prevent that, et cetera? So when you guys have like specific thoughts, specific questions, specific concerns, please, please, please do not hesitate to email me. Um, this is the first semester that this class is being taught online. So there's definitely kinks to work out. And I want to do my best to make sure that you guys are successful and that I am answering any questions that come up because if you have a question, somebody else probably does too. So if you're having trouble finding people to talk to, thinking of what you might wanna do, um, just, just let me know. It is my job to help you. I'm happy to sit down and do whatever it takes. So thank you guys. Let me know if you need anything.